Okay, first off, I'd like to apologize for the late video. I'm so sorry, like, this video came out late this summer. I was, like, sick with COVID. I recently had tonsillitis. It was, like, literally the worst illness that one could get. I couldn't swallow, like, my saliva at all. I was busy with orbital. I was busy with my girlfriend. I was doing, I was working out. I was. I was cooking, learning how to cook, and most importantly, I was procrastinating because I did not score that well for this semester. But it's okay. Here we are. We are here to discuss about year one Sam 2's BZA mod review. So let's get right into it. Alright, let's start with the dreaded 2030. CS 2030 thoughts. Doesn't get progressively harder, it gets infinitely harder after recess going through, especially if you come to like that dead and you know Java is like rather manageable. Then out of nowhere, it hits you after the recess week, so you can bring up all this what? Oh. functional programming. Yeah. And the pipeline from, from streams. Yeah, and that's like oh, functional. reminds me of like our programming when there's pipelines and shit. And that's like my weakness. Eh, so yeah. and I, I heard like from some coders and like slash seniors actually they don't really use like in future you don't really use a lot of pipelines and functional programming except ace match what's that asynchronous, asynchronous. yeah they say asynchronous except programming. asynchronous which they told us was not examinable yeah so the one like, thing that they actually used we didn't learn it yeah and if you read on NUS mods right they actually say hundreds to thousands of lines of code right they were capping it Okay, wait, 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 not thousands. Okay, not thousands, hundreds. Tell me the hundreds. Wait, yeah. hundreds, yeah. When I first saw it on NUS Mods, I was like, no way, uh, cannot be. Okay. Simply too heavy. Most of my time was spent on 2030. I would say all my other mods combined don't even add up to half of 2030. Wait, so like 2030 equals four other mods? Times two. Times two? Okay. Well, wow. for me, uh, that's huge. Because you get to do your weekly laps, mm -hmm. right? And those laps are like 1% each, yeah, by the way, but like... <sighs> you spend like... You spend an entire week... Okay, maybe not an entire week. You spend like a good 6 hours of sitting down and code. And, then, yeah. and that's on top of the 2 hours you spent during the lab to oh. attempt to solve it. That's true, that's true. And if you scrub your PA like me, uh, I got like 3% below average. And that's 3 weeks of laps just wiped out. <laughs> The project was the single most stressful thing I had. Pretty that there is nine, eight levels, and each level is like a lab. And each lab is like six hours. Like, how could it possibly be the case? 2030 is a very well structured and very vigorous module, which is something you expect from a CS module. And it was so vigorous that I did not manage to keep up with the second half of the module. It was vigorous in the sense that there were many weekly labs that you had to submit and they're all 1%, about 1% plus. And there was two PEs throughout the whole semester. One thing I like about the PEs is that they are learning based by Professor Henry, right? So they will only penalize you on how much code change that you make so make sure you understand the concept well because then you score well i also really like how they went through the answers and the solutions right before submissions because that really relieves a lot of stress on the students there's also finals and also a really really long code project i did not finish it it was a nightmare i please if you can seek all the help you can just collaborate, discuss with your friends and, and go through it because I don't want anybody to tackle this alone. It's, it's, it reduced my grades to ashes because I didn't manage to do well and start early as much as possible. Use the forums. CS 2030 would make you a better coder but it's very hard, you know, it's very tough and you just gotta see it through the end. Tell me more about it. The marketing part is quite manageable. It's markable if you mark for it. But the finance part was hard. Yeah, it's like 10 times harder than the marketing part. Because not many people are exposed to finance. Yeah. Finance concepts and stuff. So it was hard. But the quiz was actually not as bad as Because mm. I think he was quite lenient in his marking. Yeah. So like, he gave a lot of working. He's very passionate about 
the entire finance video. I watched the video they sent me and oh my gosh, it Wait, was really so yeah. helpful. Legit uh? Yeah. Uh, I just like research on my own, like the more in that stuff. That's true. Okay, I'll link I'll link the video in the description. <laughs> it's by, I think it's like an MIT lecture or something. Yeah. And it's so time consuming. Legit. Okay. For the marketing part it was quite okay. Mm. Cause it was basically just in total two projects and two quizzes. Yeah. One for each part. Um, I think marketing part was manageable, but the finance part was a bit heavier. Our coding. Yeah, we had to learn everything from scratch. Not very like super guided. Like a lot of things you have to research on your own. So it took up. It can take up quite a lot of time. So yeah, start on the project early if you can. Honestly, right? I think I still don't really understand the stuff now. Okay. I think whatever I learn is like after the quiz. I like. Completely forgot. This is BT2201, but a uh, note to future students this is discontinued for future batches of business analytics. Students matriculating in a later year, although this is our core mod, um, I'll be speaking about it. The first half was really simple, it was just about marketing, but I just felt like the project was a bit too one dimensional and uninteresting because we had to do a little report on Mumu, which was an investment uh, brokerage firm in Singapore, which I felt like there wasn't much to be discussed about or to be differentiated in the project report. They could have easily let the students choose a, a company that would benefit better. Crocs, for example, I think there's so many other options out there, but I do not know why they kind of like pin, pigeonhole us to Mumu as a choice. Second half of BT2201 was an absolute nightmare, right? Like, I love finance myself, but I felt like the teaching was really tough, right? The professor, Professor Thomas, was really curt and blunt in the Piazza forums, which made a lot of people fear about asking questions, even though it was anonymous. But I understand where he's coming from. Um, he, he thought that we had experience beforehand because there was some miscommunication with NUS management. NUS management told him and, and he expected that we had experience in statistics and finance, but we were just clearly just year one students. We were just trying to survive. And the thing that he taught was quite high level. I felt like there was probably something around the level three, level four standard. And everything was squeezed into half a semester, which I felt was quite taxing on a lot of people. I, I, I think it was definitely too much for an introductory module, especially half a module. Um, but right now, I think a lot of students don't have to worry about this. They are going to replace this core module with something else. But it was really tough uh, and a, a very tough experience. All right, calculus for computing students. I can't comment much about it because I didn't study too much. I was focusing on my other mods. I was planning on S doing this, but it's very possible for you to do well. I was asking my friends was just to keep up with the lectures and the tutorials every week. Really can get an A. It is not that bad because it is a little bit like H2 math. So there is some uh, relevance there, but I unfortunately forgot everything because of army and I was struggling. And I managed to just study my ass off at last minute. Uh, I felt like the lecture was terribly boring and really hard to understand during the lectures. Just self-study like a math mod. Like, you know, math mods are typical. You just have to self-study and ask your smart friends and study with friends. Just do peer-assisted studying. Very marketable, very grindable. And I almost didn't need to ask you. So can, you can do every mod well and just don't be like me. It's more like an extension to JC math mm. and it's not like very hard to understand like it's not super hard to get but the problem in this mod is the bell curve so even if you think you will do well like I think everyone is gonna do well also so you might not get as high as you expected mm. for this mod like any other mod just watch the lectures actually do you watch the lectures? it's like, like 20 plus lectures 25 yeah. lectures yeah. it's a lot of lectures you watch every single Honestly, yeah, but I watch on like two times speed because, oh. but I think that a lot of parts you can just skip because it's like easy to understand if you just read the notes. So oh. you don't have time, just skip the lectures and then you read the notes and then do the tutorials. Like, actually the finals, I mean the midterms are so similar to the practice exam. Mm. So you have no time, just do the practice exam. Yeah, that's true. GX1015, another G pillar which I completed this sem. 
it's called life, universe, and everything, right? Very simple. It's just an introduction introduction to philosophy. Um, I think it's a great introduction to philosophy. You know, I really love the curriculum because it's very friendly. It has a wide range of topics for you to discuss, and there's a lot of school of thought it covers. And it's also MCQ, so there's no daunting essays to write, all right? But I felt like the teaching was a little bit recycled because we were watching old lecture recordings and I really expected more being like $800 every mod, you know, like thought there'd be a lot more hands-on learning. But it is great anyways. Um, yeah, so I debunked the myth during this mod. If you get average all the way, you get a B plus for a GE mod. So I managed a B plus even though I got average for all my weekly quizzes, MCQ quizzes. The, the great thing about this mod is that you decide whether you want it to be a high workload or a low workload mod. You can put in as much time and effort as you want into it. You can also put in as little effort as you want and you just copy the majority answer on Telegram. So Jason over here, Comp Science Kid, studying uh, GEX 1015. That's right. Life, universe and everything. Life, universe and everything. <laughs> so, like so off, talks on this mod. That's, that's Wait, a philosophical question. Right now. Shut your face off. So GX one zero one five is a is is a luminous quiz kind of mod, right? You get you get one quiz every week. Eight questions, right? It's eight questions, right? Multiple choice and multiple response, yep. and you have a final, yeah. which is worth forty percent. Yep. Right. Actually. Quite similar to IS1103. Yeah, similar to IS1103 and similar in the grading as well, in my humble opinion. Yeah. What do you think of the grading? Uh, yeah. I think it's very questionable, but the thing is, they have explanations for it, so they are actually accountable for that. But we don't understand explanations. I mean, I don't understand explanations, so I assume they're smart and it's right. I uh, strongly recommend taking GEX1014 logic before taking uh, like universe and everything because a lot of the concepts that we go through I also went through in GX1014 so if you're going the philo major route which those two are prerequisites for please uh, please check it out I think I think uh, Prof Lavinia Piccolo who did my year uh, my semester mm -hmm. well, did, did wonderfully and I'm very uh, happy for her I mean I'm very happy to have had her as a professor that's great that's great alright pretty tough mod I'm gonna be honest with you. Tough to score, right? Very tough to score. They're not tough to pass, I think, as long as you remember the definitions. To every NUS student watching this right now, right, I know you're procrastinating on your quiz. Go submit it right now. It even even if you take like another two days thinking over your answers, you're not gonna submit it. So you got you have to. You absolutely have to. Exactly. You do. Set alarms, reminders. That's right. Everything. That's right. Let this be a reminder. Go submit it right now. It's existential crisis time. Right. So summarizing it, yeah. thought provoking. Th th provoking, philosophically stimulating, RNG. RNG. Yeah. All right, BD two one zero two. All right, this uh, mod is about databases, SQL especially. Can I just say BD two one zero two was an absolute nightmare? Like I absolutely hated the mod examination like structure. There was only three different examinable grading segments, and two of them were like group projects where the bell curve was so heavy it was ridiculous eh? a 28 out of 30 was the average eh? mad that's mad eh? the you know, problem with that is that there's not much differentiation between the different groups and every little bit of differentiation will cause so much difference in grades first project was insanely hard because you had to code an entire library book system using python libraries that were not taught at all all right, it was just in the project requirements that the professor gave it. And you had to learn how to collect the database structures to SQL. Like, thank God, right, there was other groups came out so graciously to help us and save us. And really shout out to those different people, all right, it's helping us out. Because I feel like we are in such a pressure cooker and the way to combat this would be helping one another. One another. Helping each other readily in times of need would really help this insane pressure cooker and rat race environment really bring a sense of normalcy in this insanity, right? So project two was about Tableau, which was great, very useful. I feel like every internship I look through, the requirements all need Tableau and 
Surprisingly, it was quite easy as compared to Project 1. Very surprising because it was about data visualization and that's very simple. All right, you just have to plug and drop uh, data here and there, visualize data in different axes, X and Y axis, and then try to paint like a very nice story on the situation. So I felt like the data was a bit lame for this project. Like there wasn't much variation. All of mine were usually just like bar charts. I'm not too sure though. Maybe I wasn't that creative enough. Maybe other groups had it presented the data differently. But I, from what I get, it mostly was bar graphs, which was the most uninteresting. Final exam was terrible. It was a 40 MCQ luminous question in 20 minutes. Can you imagine 20 minutes? It was a mad rush. Every MCQ MCQ question was just like 30 seconds and. I find it absolutely ridiculous because there was absolutely no way to finish on time by properly reading and answering the question when some of them are SQL code questions. And some of the questions are actually picked from Google. But I find that common among most like professors when they make their questions, like they actually aren't like pick out the same question and they just change the values and the data and the keywords. One thing I like about 20 minutes is that I see where they're coming from because you don't have time to cheat at all. But I don't like the idea of how your grades hang in a balance between these 20 minutes where so, so much, much things can go wrong and might go wrong, you know. And the review on the content taught, I felt like whatever they thought was really dry, you could definitely learn it from a YouTube video and probably a lot more better at your own pace and time. I wouldn't say I managed to really open my eyes a ton on databases, uh, but I felt like I could see how it looks like and see how it's applied, but there wasn't really much else to it for BT2102. What are your thoughts on 2102? It's a database mod for business analytics. Ooh. Okay, yeah. she had to tag. So, six. Two, two days, man. First of all, Delco was very heavy. Because oh, we failed one test case. Then honestly, I thought it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. Know, they're not, they're not quite, I don't know, it felt very basic to me. Mm. Like, I, I I can learn Tableau without the need for modules. The, the school like, never provide yeah. Tableau like, subscription, which I'm quite surprised. Mm. Like, if we have to sign up for ourselves, right, it's one year free subscription for students. I think I'll learn more if it was. Yeah, because yeah, Tableau, I, I learn, uh, but. It's like I can learn by myself. Like if there was a project in a job, mm. I can probably pick it up within that week. Yeah, because it's literally drag and drop. Yeah. And you have to like get used to the functions. It's it's really like using Excel. You can you can Google your way through. That's true. And honestly, the presentation skills are in like IS one hundred and one. Hmm. Uh, Here right. Yeah, it was an SQL module, but she was modeling over Python more than. Yeah. The actual SQL. Yeah. Useful? Yes. But useful. they didn't, I don't think they did a very good job. When you get a project, they're not going to tell you like, hi, 20 minutes. You have, you have access to resources. I feel like it was just a 20 minutes of a blur. Yeah, anyway, anything from the final exam, I don't remember anymore. So that is it for year 1, sem 2. Um, more review. So I, I hope that you understand. Um, Year two is coming. I'm trying to prepare myself a lot better. I'm not staying at home anymore. I'm gonna study at home. I hope this helps anybody out there. All right, bye bye.